family budgets are being strained in all kinds of ways these days. Higher gas prices, higher food bills, higher health care costs. Older Americans on fixed incomes feel the pinch more than most. The golden years are certainly not shaping up the way 66-year-old Priscilla Greer of suburban Maryland had expected. All I say, old age is full of surprises. The surprise is the day-in, day-out struggle to make ends meet, compounded by her and her husband's chronic and complex health problems. Priscilla has been treated for cancer and is diabetic. Her husband Marvin, hospitalized when we met, is diabetic, has early Alzheimer's, gastrointestinal problems, and several strokes have left him with limited mobility. Both have Medicare and supplemental insurance to help with medical expenses. To begin with, the money that we're spending for the insurance, $631 a month, that is ridiculous. American Express, <laughs> that's a heart attack. But those premiums they pay for their supplemental coverage are only the half of it. Co-pays and cost sharing bring their monthly health bills to over $1,100. Add to that all the other stuff of daily life. We live on American Express. <laughs> Unfortunately, I try not to, I try not to, but usually a lot of times I have to use the American Express for gasoline and groceries and prescriptions. And there is also now a MasterCard. It is, says Priscilla, the first time she has accumulated credit card debt. The Greers are, by the government standards, middle income, but it doesn't feel like a middle class life. Priscilla volunteers at a food bank so she can bring home some free groceries. Friends occasionally give her small sums of money. She consolidates errands to conserve gasoline. Yeah, well, it, it, it gets you. It gets to you. What are the worst moments? When it's time to pay the bills, <laughs> that's hard. You take and pay the ones that are most urgent, that you know that they will cut you off if you don't. Priscilla wonders whether she and her husband could have made different financial decisions in earlier years, so they had more of a cushion now. But given the Greer's modest incomes, it's unlikely they could have saved enough to get them through the unexpected costs of old age. Mama, let's pray about this cold because we don't want... 80-year-old Georgia Williamson, who lives in a senior apartment complex near Detroit, is a widow and the matriarch of a large family. You can handle that. Her daughter, Rita Williams, is a near constant presence and fierce advocate when it comes to managing her mother's scant finances. She usually has maybe, at the end of the month, maybe $100, $150 left. I try to establish a relationship with all her doctors, not just say, well, I'm just going to pay you a little bit and not worry about it because I never know which doctor she's going to need in the future. Georgia has a couple of thousand in savings in addition to her monthly income, so this is a precarious hold on solvency. Monthly rent is just under half her income. The next biggest chunk is health care. The financial burden created for my mother as far as her health care bills, sometimes it puts, places a lot on her because she wonders, you know, how am I going to get this bill paid or is this doctor not going to see me because I didn't pay the full amount and here I am going back to the doctor again? And we try to tell her, no, you know, and if they're not going to see you because you didn't pay, well, I'll kick in and pay. You ain't supposed to have no salt. Georgia has Medicare and her late husband's employer pays the premiums for supplemental retiree coverage. She takes six or seven medications and has an equal number of specialty doctors. On hold, though, is a visit to the dentist, whose bills are not covered by insurance or Medicare. One of the upcoming expenses is dental, trying to get dentures made, because that's a big out-of-pocket cost as opposed to getting your real teeth fixed and things like that. So that's something we have to work with the dentist and find one that's willing to work with us as far as making monthly payments until the bill is paid. 
New dentures would probably wipe out that small end-of-month surplus, which is only possible as it is because of the day-to-day -day support Georgia gets from her family. I don't think my mother would be able to meet her expenses probably and probably not even live here because she would need somebody else to probably help her with her meals, somebody to do all the shopping for her, the washing, things like that. So she would really have to truly downsize from where she has already downsized. How you doing today? Rita Williams worries about the time when her mother's needs may become greater and more complex and whether the safety net the family surrounds her with can be maintained. It's nice to have the time off, but... Darlene and Robert Hirsch of Southern California got a financial jolt when Robert lost his $100,000 a year job as a pharmacist. Watch yourself. November 30th, he said goodbye. December 1st, I'm out of a job. No severance pay. Robert hasn't found work since and worries that at 69, his income-producing days are over. After losing his employer-sponsored insurance, he moved to COBRA and will soon transfer to Medicare. He has severe allergies. Darlene, a retired manicurist, has more serious issues, including chronic fatigue, and a few years ago, she had a benign brain tumor removed. Darlene is on Medicare, the Part D drug plan, and has supplemental and dental insurance. Together, they live on Social Security and Robert's unemployment, which will end later this year. Once it does, more money will be going out than coming in. Right now on expenses, we're trying to hold our own. Trying to, we're bailing out and keeping the water at an even level. The Hershes are not drowning because they're dipping into savings. Soon they will probably begin raiding their $40,000 retirement fund. And they're not even spending what they should on medical care. Dental work is on hold. Robert ignored a broken toe. Darlene has delayed a brain scan. Even though Medicare would cover that, she's afraid to find out what her portion of the cost would be. I should be having an MRI. I should have had it already six months ago and I've put that off. I'm saying to myself, I'm going to hope everything is okay. But, you know, and then another part of me is going, well, what if it's not? Darlene is one of millions of people on Medicare to hit the donut hole. So for several months this year, she will pay much more for her prescription drugs. Well, I know the medication that I take is a thousand dollars, about a thousand dollars a month when it's not covered. And I do have the donut hole, uh, which I will have this year for probably four months. The economics of life after 65 are daunting. To manage, the Hershes have cut back, canceling trips to visit their children and social outings with friends. I'm trying to find some kind of uh, place where I can feel uh, good and, you know, try to keep that fear of uh, not having money and uh, not being able to take care of ourselves. I'm trying to push that away. Okay. Take your time. There is nothing unusual about any of these stories. These beneficiaries are neither poor enough to qualify for Medicaid or other programs that help low-income people nor well off enough to escape financial worries. They're the people in the middle. They do benefit from the valuable financial protection Medicare offers. But between premiums, co-pays, coverage gaps, other living expenses, limited savings, and a congressional debate about Medicare that may lead to higher out-of-pocket costs, that protection seems more fragile than ever. I'm Jackie Judd with the Kaiser Family Foundation.